Welcome to Professionalism and Customer Service in the Healthcare Environment, Teams and Small Groups. In this unit, we will be learning about teams in the context of health information technology. This is Lecture A, Characteristics of Teams and Small Groups. The objectives for this lecture, Characteristics of Teams and Small Groups, are to explore the phenomena of teams in our culture and look at the popularity and necessity of teams in delivering quality healthcare services. Define a team as compared to a group. Identify the stages of team development. Identify the characteristics of successful teams. The quotation a cult has grown up around teams. Even in a society as fiercely independent as America, teams are considered almost sacrosanct. The belief that working in teams makes us more creative and productive is so widespread is one that supports general societal norms about the power of teams in leading to better outcomes. In fact, the word sacrosanct in this context means that the value of teams cannot even be questioned. In efforts to become more competitive, healthcare organizations have become flatter, that is, they have significantly eliminated layers of middle management. As this occurs, teams have become commonplace and promote employee involvement in operating decisions. When functioning at their best, teams possess the capacity to build on organizational strengths and better address organizational challenges. However, Creating a highly functioning team that produces quality results is not a quick or easy task. The healthcare workplace is divided into numerous professional and occupational groups, including physicians, nurses, allied health clinicians, administrators, and IT professionals. As no single occupational group is able to independently deliver a full episode or continuum of care, Teamwork becomes extremely important in healthcare environments. Research studies have acknowledged teamwork as an essential ingredient for safe and high quality patient care. Because quality patient outcomes rely on effectively functioning teams, it is necessary that health professionals are prepared to support and lead teams. There are many benefits of teams in healthcare. These benefits include breaking down barriers to successful collaboration and communication. Also, teams can significantly increase the speed at which work is able to be performed. Teams tend to nurture the commitment of their participants. A group that meets together on a regular basis will more than likely end up reaching their goals especially if the group has a good leader. Teams have been shown to produce more customer-focused cultures. And finally, teams can make the organization more flexible, improving the organization's ability to adapt more easily to change. Richard Hackman is a professor of psychology at Harvard who has written extensively on teams. Diane Cotu reported on her interview with Hackman in the Harvard Business Review. Hackman's statement from the article is on the slide, quote, I have no question that when you have a team, the possibility exists that it will generate magic, producing something extraordinary, a collective creation of previously unimagined quality or beauty. But don't count on it. The quote speaks to the power of teams, but also to some of the difficulties that may be encountered when working within them. Hackman says that research indicates that teams typically do not reach their fullest potential. Although there are benefits to the collaborative effort of the team, issues related to team coordination and individual motivation can detract from those benefits. In addition, when competition with other teams is involved, positive steps forward can be thwarted in fact, this is why Hackman states that having a team is often worse than having no team at all. It is instructive to examine the difference between a group and a team. 
Although similar, there are important differences between the two. The performance of a group is dependent on what its members accomplish individually. The performance of a team goes beyond individual accomplishments and is the result of synergistic work products among team members. A key difference between a group and team is that teams require both individual and shared accountability. In healthcare IT, teams are often seen in the implementation of projects. Most HIT projects require resources with different skill sets and constituencies gathered for the goal of completion of the project. If you were to work as a project manager or as a team member, it will be particularly important that you are able to work effectively within the context of a team. Katzenbach and Smith define a team as a small number of people with complementary skills who are committed to a common purpose, set of performance goals, for which they hold themselves accountable. We can see in this definition that the requisite skills needed by the team to accomplish the work must reside within the team members themselves. The members must agree to the purpose of the team, the goals that the team seeks to achieve, and must agree to hold themselves accountable for achieving those goals. Team members must be committed to the team's purpose and goals and to hold themselves individually and mutually accountable for achieving those goals. The operative word here is commitment. The concept of stages of individual development is a good analogy for describing the development of teams. Both go through specific phases as they develop and evolve over time. Initially, the individuals may be more like a group, but over time they evolve into a team. Effectively participating in or leading a team requires a good understanding of the phases of team development. It is this topic to which we next turn our attention. Susan Whelan provides a four-stage model of team development. The stages are Stage 1, Dependency and Inclusion. Stage 2, Counterdependency and Flight. Stage 3, Trust and Structure. Stage 4, Work. The initial stage of team development, Stage 1, Dependency and Inclusion, is characterized by members' dependence and reliance on the team leader and or another strong individual within the group. The members may be new to the team and to the focus and work of the team, hence reliance on the leader. In addition, because they are new to the group, members are often concerned about their psychological safety and feelings of inclusion within the group. Members at this stage are often observed engaging in pseudo-work, discussing their families, vacations, personal lives, etc., activities not relevant to the team's work. They also look to the team leader to be directive and to make decisions. Moreover, because members want to feel accepted and included at this stage, they are reluctant to express opposing points of view that may place them at odds with others. The next stage of team development, Stage 2, counterdependency and flight, is characterized by members' desires to become independent of the team leader. Arguments regarding team purpose, goals, values, and processes often take place during this stage. Conflict is often unavoidable as a result. However, the conflict experienced at this stage is important in that it can create a foundation for the development of trust and an environment where members feel comfortable expressing disagreement and opposing viewpoints. The third stage of team development, Stage 3, Trust and Structure, is typified by growing team member trust, cooperativeness, and commitment to the group. Communication within the team improves significantly as it becomes more open and focused on the task at hand. Team structure, roles, and processes are clarified. Working relationships improve. The fourth stage of team development, stage four, work, is when the group of individuals becomes a high-performing team. Issues from previous stages have been resolved, 
and the energy and focus of the team is directed more completely on task completion and achieving goals. The amount and quality of work accomplished increases during this stage. Elaine Beek has described the characteristics of successful teams. Now let's look at Beek's 10 characteristics of successful teams. Clear goals are at the top of the list. The team leader should allow members to understand what the team is trying to achieve and should explain the overall purpose of the team's work. In healthcare IT, the goal is often obvious from the specific project to which the members are assigned, i.e. implementation of an EMR in the cardiology clinic. Second is defined roles. If you are a team leader, you should provide a clear understanding of the role each member plays on the team and why they are serving on the team. For instance, having assignments of who will manage the training, servers, coding, and configuration will help set what you expect from team members. Open and clear communication comes next. High quality communication is one of the most critical elements in building high performing teams. High quality communication is a required component of effective team learning. It is very effective to make sure a team has someone assigned to document proceedings and particularly the assigned tasks and decisions made by the team. This increases the sense of accountability for each member's contribution. And it also provides a forum to reference questions on decisions that inevitably arise later. Effective decision making is an essential element of successful teams. However, in order for a decision to be effective, the team must go through a consensus process to reach agreement. As we mentioned before, write it down. Balanced participation means that everyone is fully engaged in the work of the team and participating. Team leadership is important here to encourage and motivate the team members to be engaged, contributing, and participating. In HIT, Many times, clinical staff may feel a bit overwhelmed by all the change that seems to be coming their way. It will be your task to engage them, demystify the technology, and get their buy-in to the change process. Diversity includes such things as ethnicity, age, gender, race, etc., but is much more than that. The team must acknowledge each member's skills, knowledge, ability, aptitudes, and experiences. Needed skill sets required for the team's work should be available and embodied within that team's membership. In the healthcare IT setting, teams will involve diverse groups of people, some with clinical expertise, workflow expertise, technical expertise, financial expertise. Skill sets can run the gamut of disciplines at an institution, and all the members will come to the team with slightly different values and expectations. The team needs to recognize and navigate through this, steering toward the solution that best addresses your organization's needs. Team members should be able to express their perspectives and ideas without fear of retaliation. In other words, conflict should be managed. The team members should be able to jointly develop goals for the team. Smart people disagree, so you need to try to understand all parties and reach a consensus in decision-making. Make it a rule in your team that all new ideas will be loved for at least five minutes. People who violate this rule should be called out and told to give the idea it's time to be processed. A friendly, encouraging, and positive atmosphere allows team members to enjoy working with the group and allows for a climate of trust to develop. Moreover, a positive and encouraging atmosphere can lead to improved problem solving and creativity. It's very useful to get the team out of the work setting and let them blow off steam. This provides the opportunity to make connections with teammates that otherwise wouldn't occur. For example, it is very common in healthcare IT to meet outside of work for socialization prior to or immediately after implementation of a system.
Because team task completion is so dependent on the complementary efforts and expertise of team members, those interdependencies can be leveraged through positive, cooperative, interpersonal relationships. In healthcare IT, this should be self-evident. There can be huge differences in workflow and clinical processes, even within the same practice group. Successful implementation of HIT within an organization is always a team effort and requires diverse and skilled people's involvement for success. Finally, we come to participative leadership. Participative leadership requires strong, encouraging team leaders who willingly and appropriately share responsibility as well as recognition with the team. Leaders should demonstrate that they are not afraid to get their hands dirty and that they can go to the trenches with the rest of the team. An example of this would be while technical staff are installing new image review stations, that a senior radiologist stays a little late to help a bit in deploying the new workstations and even helps dust off some of the equipment that had not been moved in quite a while. By doing this extra bit, the radiologist demonstrates that he is a participative leader. This concludes Lecture A. In summary, we discussed how teams are becoming very important in healthcare. We distinguished between a team and a group and identified the characteristics of successful teams.